Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to this Fronios webinar. I will show you today the new uh, features that we offer at Fronios, um, the energy cost assistant on one hand, and on the other hand, the battery control. Yesterday, maybe some of you attended the webinar regarding our new battery, the reserver. You see it here in the background. And uh, suitable to the reserver, also the new battery management got online. Uh, in Austria, those two features, they were released last week and they are rolled out currently country by country. So depending where you are from, uh, you will receive access to those features soon. My name is Max and I'm very happy to guide you through this webinar today. By my side and behind the camera, there's my colleague Kilian Schachtner. Kilian is the product manager for those two new features, so for the energy cost assistant and for battery management, uh, battery control. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Just use the chat function and Kilian will answer them uh, while I'm speaking. After the presentation, we will do a quick Q&A session. So uh, I will take a look at your questions and um, discuss some of them if this is necessary. What are we going to do today? So first of all, I want to introduce you battery control. So this uh, manual battery management system. Secondly, we will then go to the automatic battery management. This is the energy cost assistant in short ECA. We will also discuss requirements. So what do you need for those two features or what do your end customers need for those two features? And in the end, I do have some announcements to make and also I will do some outlook on um, on developments we are planning on those two features. Let's start with battery control. So uh, battery control, um, what is the thought behind it? The idea comes from Australia and uh, the demand was following um, bad situ weather situations, uh, storms and whatever can, can break the the public energy grid happens in Australia much more often and many other customers had the demand that they can charge their battery uh, by pressing a button, so manually, and then that they are prepared for a power outage. So this is the feature we developed. Battery control is freely available and exclusively on SolarWeb app. So you don't find this battery control button in the SolarWeb in the browser only in the solar web app. By touching the button, the battery is charging fully, so up to 100%. Be careful, 100% SOC. So um, whatever the customer has entered, the maximum SOC is. So if this is 80%, then by pressing this button, uh, the battery is charging up to 80%. After the battery is fully charged, it is then locked for 24 hours. So the idea is it is fully charged and then it doesn't get decharged by any other loads mm -hmm. and the end customer is prepared for whatever is coming. You already find a how-to video on battery control, so please feel free to go on YouTube also to scan the QR code here on the on the bottom left side. Uh, also in this, in this uh, how-to video, everything is explained and you can also send this link to end customers. Let's go through an example, maybe an example that is more likely to happen here in Europe or in Austria. So let's say the customer receives a message from the grid operator. And the grid operator is telling that uh, there's a planned power failure due to maintenance work. And let's say this power failure is scheduled at nine in the morning on Friday. What can the customer then do? So customer goes to his solar web app, you see here, this is the overview. So this is the first page he's seeing. The current customer is scrolling down until he finds the start button. And with the start button, battery control can be activated. As soon as he has done that, the battery starts charging and the interface changes as you can see here. So then you see battery is charging and you see the, 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 um, the charging situation it is in. It can be stopped at any time just by pressing the button again. 
Once the battery is fully charged, then the screen will look like that. Uh, at any time, the battery can be unlocked. And if that is not happening, then um, battery lock is fixed for 24 hours. So again, if we're going back to an example, so the grid failure is scheduled at Friday 9 a.m., then uh, the customer can, let's say, Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening, start battery control and the battery then is charged. So this is the manual battery control um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, we released the automatic battery management as well. And this automatic battery management is called the Energy Cost System, in short, the ECA. There has already been a webinar on the ECA, I think last year, it was December, so maybe some of you attended it already. Um, by now, it has already gone live in certain countries, for example, in Austria, and I can also show you some more details how it works. Before that, in theory, how does it work? So it includes four parameters. This is on the one hand forecast of production, on the other hand forecast of consumption, and also flexible electricity tariffs and the battery stage of state of charge. So the ECA is working with forecasts and also with patterns. So your consumption patterns and your production patterns are also shaping the work of the ECA. By knowing those four parameters, the ECA is actually doing two things. On the one hand, it is limiting the discharge of the battery when high consumption is expected. Um, so, battery knows, or the ECA knows, high prices will come, production will be below consumption. So, we are limiting or even blocking the discharge of the battery at a certain moment. And if the tariff is very favorable, then it can even happen that the battery is charged with, uh, with grid electricity, so with cheap electricity from the net. I think that gets clearer if we're looking at the real example. And in fact, I have two for you. So the first one is a little bit a, a simple example. And the second one is a more complicated one where you see the full work of the ECA. What you see here, this graph, on this graphic, you can also see in SolarWeb. So on the, also the end customer sees that in SolarWeb. You see here below the blue curve, this is the price development of the of electricity. So this is the flexible tariff. So you see in the morning, there is a peak. In this case, it's a, a not a high peak, a very low peak. And at noon, electricity prices are really low. And in the evening, there's a second peak at around 6 p.m. Above, you see, as always, you see the production in yellow. You see in gray the consumption. And the green line is obviously the battery SOC. And in the, in the top left, you see the actions of the, of the ECA. So the first one, this signalizes, always signalizes that the battery discharged is blocked. And as soon as you see this abbreviation LIM, then this means that the battery is discharging, but at a lower speed. So in this case, the ECA recognized that in the, in the morning, there will be high prices or relatively high prices. There will be uh, no, uh, no production yet, but high consumption. And for that, it blocked the battery capacity overnight. So between uh, 12 a.m and 4 a.m. discharge got fully blocked and between 4 and 6 a.m. then the discharge rate uh, was a little bit slower. The rest of the day was a beautiful sunny day and yeah, battery management happened as always. This is a simple example. Let's go to a more complicated one. Again, you see the price development in the, on the bottom, you see two price peaks in the morning and in the evening. 
And on top again, yellow the production, gray consumption, and green is the battery state of charge. In this case, the ECA again recognized this price peak in the morning and again recognized that there will be no production to consumption uh, to cover the consumption. So what does it uh, did it do? First of all, it blocked the battery fully. Between 3 and 5 a.m. it even charged the battery. It charged the battery because it saw that the difference between this low price in the, in the at night and the high price at the peak has such a difference that it pays off that the battery gets charged. Charge the battery, then it blocked it again until 8, until this price peak, and then there was uh, energy in the battery so that this price peak got covered. And then this game starts again from scratch. So um, the, the battery gets blocked over noon, over the day, so that it is prepared for this price peak in the evening. And in the evening, when there's no sunshine, no production, then still there is um, there is some uh, battery energy left to cover the consumption there. So with the ACA, you can perfectly perfectly use flexible tariffs, and it always it always gets the maximum out of it. What are the requirements? So to use the ECA, end customers need SolarWeb Premium. If they have SolarWeb Premium, then the ECA is free, so there is no there are no additional charges. And what you can communicate to your end customers at any time, uh, the price for SolarWeb Premium, they will always cover with the ECA. So SolarWeb Premium always or in most cases pays off. Then in SolarWeb, there is a new, a new category here. You see operation, operation mode. This is new. And if they click on operation mode, then the end customers, they get told what they all need for getting the energy cost assistance. Actually, those are three things. SolarWeb Premium, a flexible tariff they have to enter, and they have to activate the weather and yield forecast. At some times, an update of the software might also be necessary. How to get solar web premium, how to get the weather and yield forecast, and also for the ECA in total, you find how to videos on our YouTube channel. You can also scan the QR codes here, especially if you are re watching this webinar uh, later on. Um, so solar web premium is clear, where the yield forecast is clear, easy in general. One thing I want to mention at this point is how to set these flexible energy tariffs. This is new. So far, you could only set standard tariffs. I guess you know it. So you go to settings and then you go to tariffs and there you find adding standard tariffs. And from now on, you can also add flexible tariffs. It will look like what you see on the screen right now. Um, you just enter here a flexible tariff. This is also a, a feature that is only available in sort of a premium. So, in the end, some announcements. Um, what is the status of those two features, battery control and ECA? It is currently rolled out. In Austria, this has already happened, and now week by week, other countries will follow. In the future, we have plans to expand the abilities of the ECA. What is on the to-do list? We want to include feed-in limits as well as feed-in tariffs and grid fees, especially when feeding tariffs and grid fees will also become flexible. And we guess that this is only a matter of time. And as soon as this will be possible, then you get even more out of smart battery management. Then the ECA will be ready for that. Feed-in limits is also a thing we get asked frequently. So the idea is there is a feed-in limit of, let's say, 4 kilowatt. This is the case often in Austria. I don't know how it is in your countries. And if that is happening, then you want your battery to charge, to not charge in the morning or in the evening, but especially in summer, uh, only during noon, during the peak. And this can currently is um, not included 
in the ECA management, but as I said, is on the to-do list. We get to an end of this webinar. I hope this was informative for you and I hope you enjoyed watching it. As always, the recording will be sent to you. Um, you can rewatch this at any time. If you like this webinar and you want to register for others, please feel free. You can do that at any time on our homepage. There as well, you can register for online trainings or also for face-to-face -face trainings here in Austria. Um, again, I want to point out the Frontus YouTube channel. A visit there always pays off. You find there all the how-to videos and also the videos I mentioned in this video. All right, um, I will take a look at your questions. I see my colleagues, Kilian and also Tony behind the camera, they are uh, writing as much as they can and answering as many questions as they can. Let me check if there, if there is something. Um, I should mention in public. Um, maybe that, that is also a thing to mention. Um, what pilot can actually work with the ECA together? So if you have this in the system, then the smart charging modes, echo mode, next trip mode, you can use them without a problem. However, Charging of your car, this is not included in what the ECA is taking into account. So, um, yeah, this is uh, some work for the future we will we will do and something we will include as soon as we can. <laughs>